G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at how we can make our own mods that add cargo ships to the game. And because I'm currently doing a survival series on a planet, I want to show you how you can make your own planetary cargo ships. So that we can hopefully as a group get more people able to do this and that means more cargo ships and more mods that add cool PvE content to the game. This is all going to be using Meridius 9's planetary cargo ships mods and in fact the only reason I've been remotely able to do this is because he directly approached me to see if I could and helped me all the way through because I am hopeless at any of this programming, programming stuff as many of you know. So without Meridius 9 this would not have been possible so I want to say a big thank you before I get going. The first thing we need to do is head to New Game, go to Custom Game, and we're going to do a... Let's pick a star system. And we're going to call this Co Planetary Cargo Ship Tutorial. We want it set to Survival. We want it set to offline and it needs to be offline because our mod that we initially create is going to be an offline mod and we need to test it before we share it to the workshop. We then want to hit advanced, set our inventory size to realistic and it needs to be realistic because we're going to be using this world to create our cargo ship and if it's set to any higher inventory size then your cargo ship might not function as you expect when it loads up in a realistic world. So this is the way to make sure that your cargo ship will work with everyone's game. Next up, we want to make sure that we've got Enable Spectator. That's going to allow us to enable creative tools once we launch into the game. And cargo ships needs to be enabled, random encounters needs to be enabled, and our drones need to be enabled. But let's get rid of wolves and spiders because we do not need them. I'm also going to turn off sun rotation so that wherever we choose to settle is always going to be lit. So we can click OK. We then need to go to our mods. The mods that we need to load are we need our planetary cargo ships mod. So we add that. We need an insane cargo ship spawn rate. And this, is, this means that every 30 seconds or so you'll get a new cargo ship which will make it much easier to test to see if everything's worked. If you're going to be creating a space-based cargo ship, you'll definitely want to suppress vanilla cargo ships and encounters, as these will help reduce the number of spawns of the vanilla cargo ships that are in the game. The final thing we want is our encounters setup mod. And this is going to help us fill the inventories that we need in our ships so that they can function properly. So we click OK, and then we'll click Start. Now that we're ready to load in, we'll select Spacesuit and Respawn. When we spawn in our spacesuit, we'll be flying above the planet and falling towards it. I'm not really worried about that. I'm going to press F8, and I'm going to find myself a nice spot on the planet, holding down Shift, to move faster as well as scrolling the mouse wheel up will increase our spectator cam's movement speed. So let's pick a nice spot somewhere around here. Before we teleport ourselves let's press Alt F10, enable creative mode tools and then go to admin tools and enable invulnerable. Then we can press control space, teleport ourselves here and now we're ready to build our cargo ship. I'm not going to go through the whole build process, instead what I'm going to do is spawn in something I prepared earlier. So if we go to our blueprints menu with F10, we can select our pit's cargo ship. And we'll use this one. Press Ctrl V to paste this in and this, way, this is why we need creative mode tools. And then we can look at what this ship has that allows it to function as a planetary cargo ship. First off, it needs to have a cockpit. That's why this is a modified version of the previous drone. This cockpit needs to be set to the main cockpit and it needs that so that the spawn algorithm knows which way the ship should be facing when it gets spawned in. We also need to have a beacon or an antenna. 
and you probably want these set to broadcast radiuses somewhere at least 15,000 but we'll just go 20,000 for the sake of it. This means that we'll be able to see this ship when it spawns in. Next up, for a planetary cargo ship you need to have a remote control. This isn't necessarily true of a space based one but we're going to build a planetary one here so we, we need to have a remote control and that needs to be set to flight mode one way. Now that we've got the beacon, the cockpit, the remote control, let's make sure that all these inventories are full. Using our encounter setup mod, we can press enter, type slash, fill grids. Oh, need correct capitals. Then hit enter. And it will fill the inventories of weapons, reactors, and oxygen generators so that they've got a small amount in them. So if we have a look now, we probably actually already got these full of stuff. But now the Gatling turrets have ammunition in them. Not a huge amount, but enough for an encounter. Those reactors already had uranium in them, so they're slightly different. Now that we've got our ship all ready to go, we can press Control c to copy it. Then we need to press F11, and we need to export the clipboard to file. And you'll see that that's now exported it as the pits cargo ship.sbc. And with that done, we can exit our world and get ready to actually make this mod. The first thing you're going to want to do is press Windows plus R and then type in percent app data percent slash space engineers. And it should appear as an autocomplete and then press enter. Now we're in our Space Engineers folder and we can start to set up this mod. So what we're going to do is go into our mods folder and create a new folder in here. And we're going to call this Cargo Ship Tutorial. Open that up, create yet another new folder and this one needs to be capitalized correctly. So capital D, A-T-A -A for data. Then create another folder inside that with prefabs with a capital P. And then inside that prefabs folder, we're going to create, move that file we just created before. So go back to our space engineers folder, go to export. We'll grab this SBC with control X. We'll move it into our mod folder in data in prefabs and paste it there. Now inside this data folder, we're going to have to create another SBC file. To create our SBC file, what we're going to do is Right click new, text document, and you need to make sure that you've got file extensions visible, which is in view, file name extensions. This will allow us to edit the file name extension at the same time. And this needs to be called spawn groups, both capitalized, dot SBC. Hit enter. Yes, I do want to change it. And now we can open this file in something like Notepad++. That's my preferred editing software for this sort of thing, as it does highlight when you make some silly errors. The code that we're going to put into this file is from a paste bin link that Meridius9 sent me. So we're going to select everything there, Control C, and we'll paste it here. There are several things in this file that we don't need, and that's because this is a generic one that gives you all the different types of encounters that you might have within a game. So you've got our cargo ships, you've got our exploration encounters, you've got pirate exploration encounters, and you've got pirate drones. We're only interested in the cargo ship for this particular mod. So we'll delete those other bits all the way down to where it says do not edit below this line. Delete those, and then we've just got our cargo ship spawn group. Let's select language and, and select XML. And then we can hit save. Now we're ready to edit this for our particular prefab. So if we open up our prefabs folder, we can see that it's called pits cargo ship.sbc. Now we're ready to set this up for ourselves. Don't need to edit anything until you get down to this subtype ID. And you want to make this a unique spawn group name. So we're going to call this pits cargo ship 
since there's only going to be one of those. This frequency we can modify as well and that can be anywhere between 1.0 and 5.0. Let's put it at 3 so it's relatively common. When I recorded this I didn't realise that the IsPirate tag is actually used by Meridius 9's mod to differentiate between ships that are only capable of atmospheric flight and ships that are capable of both atmospheric and space flight. If you've got a cargo ship that can be spawned with the vanilla cargo ships in space as well as being capable of flying on a planet, then you can leave this is pirate tag to false. If, like in my example here, which I shouldn't have done, you've got an atmosphere only capable ship, you want to change this tag to true and that will mean it will only spawn with the atmospheric cargo ships. It won't spawn in space and that's probably a good thing since we don't want our atmosphere only ships to be spawning in space. This here, this subtype ID, which is the pre which has been pre-filled as prefab file name, needs to be the exact file name of the SBC file without the file name extension. So we can select it here, press Ctrl C, go in here, you can double click that in Notepad++ and then paste and we'll have the exact name in there. Next up we want to set our beacon text and let's call this pits and then we can set our speed that this spawns at and it can be anywhere up to 30 meters a second let's make this 25. Since this is going to be an atmospheric cargo ship we need to modify one final thing and that's in this subtitle subtype ID. We need to add in brackets capital A A T M O for atmo and then close brackets. Hit save and everything should be ready to go. So let's check to see what I've missed. Let's go to load game, select our session, edit our settings, go to mods, and then we need to add our mod to this list. Click OK, click OK again, and load up. Now that the game's loaded up, we can actually check to see if there were any errors. Click F11. There were no loading errors, that's good. And now we wait to see if the first cargo ship that spawns is ours. Hopefully this won't take terribly long. And there we go, we've got a cargo ship and it's the Space Pirate Pits. Let's hop in our spectator cam so we don't get shot at. And let's make sure this is our ship. There's even a second one of them that spawned now. Oh, went past it. And there we go. There is the pits flying by as a cargo ship. Now that we've added one cargo ship to the game, what if we want to add more? If we've got a full collection we want to add? Well, that's actually quite easy. And we'll use... Let's use our old favourite, the Drop Bear, for this one. And I've named a ship the Drop Bear Express that's mostly ready to go. The only thing this one's missing is a remote control block. So let's place that on and face it the right way and there we go. Now we should be good to go. Let's just check that the beacon's okay. Cockpit, main cockpit, drop bear express set to 50,000, remote control one way and we are good. So let's copy this, get to our F11, export clipboard to file, and then let's bring up our notepad and our folder. So we know where that, fol where that file was created, so we go back to our export and we cut that and we paste that into our mod, cargo ship tutorial, data, prefabs, paste a second one in here. And now we go to our spawngroups.sbc and we need to duplicate what we used for getting the pits in. So we can copy that, enter, paste, and now we need to name all of this correctly for the new ship. So this one's going to be the Drop Bear Express. I'm going to delete the cargo ship, leaving in Atmo because it's an atmospheric ship. We'll leave the frequency at 3 those remain the same. The subtype ID 
needs to be exactly as the file name as before and we can see that is drop space bear space express and then the beacon text will be drop bear express and there we go now we can simply exit out of this save change before quitting save this and when we reload that should load with our updated mod and it should as it spawns in those cargo ships spawn both of them not just one so it'll alternate between the two somewhat randomly based on the chance that we gave each one to be spawned so both were set to three so there should be about equal chance of either one of them spawning when a new ship spawns so we may have to wait a little while before we see the drop bear coming in but let's check out how long it takes I've currently got a whole bunch of pits spawned in what i might do is go to alt f10 go to our biggest grids and remove some of these so that it's clearer when the next one spawns in and it may have taken us four ships to spawn until it appeared but we have our drop bear express and because this one doesn't have guns i could actually fly up to it in my suit so that's how you can add multiple ships to the cargo ship list and have multiple different things that can fly around as cargo ships on your planet. Now that we've got our mod working, we need to publish it to the workshop. And the way we can do that is going to our edit setting, going to our mods, and we could select our mod here and click publish. But before we want to do that, before we do that, I should say, we should really give it a thumbnail. And you need to put the thumbnail in the mod directory beside the data folder. And I've created a thumbnail for this so we can select this and click publish yes and we'll publish this to the workshop and in this case i don't think it really fits any of the obvious categories it's not a respawn ship it's not a hard it's not a planet so let's just click okay once it's published if you've got the steam overlay enabled it'll show up and it'll show up with your thumbnail and that's everything. That's how you can create your own cargo ship mods to add to your own games and to share with everyone on the workshop. If there's any extra information you'd like to find out about this, please let me know. I'll do my best to help out with whatever I can in terms of questions about how to do this in different ways. But for more detail, Meridius 9 is going to post a guide that's a written guide, which will also be able to be kept more up to date than my video. So make sure you check that out as well. And as always, there is plenty more to come, so I'll see you then.